Well, hello and welcome. My name is Mark Epner. I'm a Chicago-based pilot with over half of my 2,000 plus hours in a Cirrus SR-22. Currently, I fly this 2011 normally aspirated G3, but also fly other aircraft when the opportunity presents itself. I love flying every bit as much as you do and look for ways to share that common bond through multiple paths, including this channel, as well as Simple Flight Radio, which you can find at simpleflight.net. My goal for the channel is to share my passion for aviation with others that share that same sentiment and do so with an eye towards proficiency, safety, and fun. This week, we go back into the air with CFI Bob Schmelzer, who attempts to teach me some more of the maneuvers necessary to earn a commercial pilot's license. While a commercial license is one of the necessary items to be able to get paid for flying, many pilots earn their license for a very different reason. For example, to take their skills to the next level. The maneuvers we practice teach the pilot about controlling the plane to the limits of its capabilities. Performance maneuvers are intended to enhance a pilot's proficiency in flight control application, maneuver planning, situational awareness, and operating an airplane with divided attention. Bottom line, in many cases, it's about pride. Now, last week we learned about soft field takeoffs and lazy eights. This week, Bob showed me steep turns, which is a 50 degree bank in each direction, a maneuver called the chandelle, and he even threw in an engine out emergency. As with last week, part of my goal is to share with you what it's like to fly with an instructor. A quick side note, as you'll see, I'm experimenting with showing gauges on the screen for airspeed, altitude, and direction. These are showing data from the GPS capabilities of the GoPro camera. So it also means that because the GPS signal can differ based on barometric pressure and wind, the speed and the altitude may vary slightly from the instrumentation in the cockpit. Let me know if you think this is a good representation or if it's more of a distraction. So let's go flying. And looking at my attitude indicator too for bank angle and pitch. So I know it's going to take about that much pitch right there. Then I'm looking outside and I'm rapidly scanning the altimeter. Because if it's not where I want it, I need to make a change. Right. But if I don't, if I'm not looking at the altimeter, I won't know that I need to make a change. See? Got it. So that's you got to be as much as we want this to be an outside visual reference maneuver. You got to use this is your this is your grade book. I mean, this is the report card. Yeah, that's the report card right there. I mean, you might think you have the nose at the right attitude. But the only way to confirm that is to rapidly scan the altimeter. Okay? Yep. And then I brought the power back again when I when I leveled out. I did not trim during the steep turn. Don't some people do? Usually can't do it very well, so especially in the Cirrus. Right. All right. So here, your airplane. My airplane. And then in commercial, you'd ro do one to the left like that and immediately roll to the right, same thing to the right. So two back to back one uh, 360 turns at 50 degrees of bank. And we'll roll right to the one to the right now. Look to the right, roll to the right. Check your altitude, right on the money, pretty close. Look at that, get that nose down, that's too much pitch. We know where the pitch about needs to be, about three to four degrees. A little bit more right rudder, and just a teensy bit more bank. There you go, perfect, right there, look at that guy. Look at that altitude, I love it. Man, you're better than me, come on. Screw up a little bit, okay? Okay. <laughs> there you go, roll out, looking outside, right on the section line, nose on the horizon, and then power back, so you don't get fast. Very nice, nice that recovery. That was the best one you've done today. I'm good. How are we doing? We're good. All right, nice steep turns. Uh, you can see now you can practice slow All flight, right. steep turns. We haven't done stalls, but we won't do that today anyway. And not not that I, not that I don't want to, but we wanted to introduce some of those chandelles and stuff. Right. So all right, so we're clear of the class Bravo. 
why don't we uh, let me demonstrate uh, a Sean Delta the left? Airplane. Okay, so we're gonna clear the area. Look to the left, look, bank left. Look below the wing, and where we see there's nobody around us on the traffic display. Same thing here. Here we're gonna look to the right, bank to the right. Nobody around us. All right, we're gonna start this maneuver at 130 knots, in spite of the uh, Cirrus FOM. See, I don't have a Cirrus type rating, so I don't know all that stuff. Okay. I usually zoom in a little more than yep. that because yeah. all this stuff that's way, way out there is totally irrelevant to me. So there's my 130 knots, even if I had to descend a little bit to get it, because I'm not trying to maintain altitude here. I'm just trying to hold that speed. So I'm pitching for speed here. I got my power up. All right, we're going to go we're going to go left on this so they got the airplane pretty well trimmed for this i look left smartly roll into a 30 degree bank get once i get my 30 degree bank established i begin to slowly advance power as i raise the nose and i want to get the nose to 20 degrees nose up uh when i hit the east heading so it's it's about it's about raising the nose at the proper rate, maybe 18 degrees. Right here, I'm adding right rudder. That starts the bank coming out. As the bank comes out, notice the bank is continuously decreasing. I'm keeping that pitch right there at 18 degrees nose up, and look at how the bank is gradually, continuously decreasing. 30 degree heading, my bank is at 10. But I'm looking at the big picture. I'm not even looking at at that, I'm just now keep that pitch there at 18 degrees. Here comes my north heading. Airspeed is just above a stall. Wings just reaching zero. Maneuver complete. Then I then I lower the nose. Airplane's coordinated. I'm using a lot of right rudder. I push. I'm having to push a lot of right rudder there. So then that's it. That's a Shondell. That would have passed any check right. <laughs> Will you come with me? I might. <laughs> I won't need to. Because by the time you take it, that's how you'll be flying. <laughs> Look for traffic before you turn. That's good. Clear on the right, and your traffic display is good. We'll roll into a 30-degree bank. Once you've got that bank locked in, begin to gradually increase your pitch at a rate that allows you to just be reaching 18 degrees at the 90-degree point. And adding power, too. Yep, and bring the nose up. We want to just be reaching 18 degrees right now on the west heading. So a little bit slow on the pitch up. So hold that 18 degrees. That's not 18. Here's 18 up here. But but see, look at the bank didn't start coming out. We're almost at 180, and the bank is still almost at 30. Yeah. Oh, that's it. Yeah. Got it. Okay. See, so part of the reason... Part of the let me take the airplane for a second. Airplane. Part of the reason that's uh, kind of difficult is that torque and the P factor are pulling you to the left. So it's it's kind of trying to maintain that 30 degrees of bank for you. So unless you so that's why at the 90. I'm gonna bank 30 degrees. Look for traffic. We're gonna bank 30 degrees. We're not gonna do the pitch element. We're just doing the bank. So the first 90 degrees of a Shondell, you're holding and maintaining. 30 degrees of bank. Right. Then when you get to the 90 degree point, this is where we would just be reaching maximum pitch. Now, at this point, a little bit of right rudder, well, I'm not adding right rudder now, but this is where the bank starts decreasing. But by looking at the big picture, see, I, I'm looking at my end target. I want that bank to just be reaching zero as I approach that north heading. You see how the bank that? is connected. Yeah. Here, you go. Yeah, you make a 30-degree bank to the left. We'll hold that for the first 90 degrees, and then we'll gradually roll More that 30 degrees of bank. Out. We're just concentrating on the bank element here, simulating the bank element for Shondells. So for that first 90, this is where the pitch would be going up, but we're not going to do that now. Yeah. So there we are. We're reaching the 90-degree point. Here's where the bank needs to just gradually start coming out but it helps for me to see that big picture I'm looking at the whole horizon yeah you're doing good here so without even looking at this you want to just be reaching zero bank 
Look at that. Look at that. See, you're a natural. That's what I'm talking about. Come on, keep it coming. Yeah, keep, keep it. Don't, but don't roll into more bank. Just right. make sure you don't take too much out too soon. Save a little bit to the very end. Now, very good. That was excellent. Now, you see how long that took to do that last 90 degrees? If you do it right. And climbing. Yeah, just if you fine. do that just right, it takes quite a while to make that last 90 degrees yeah, it's, turn. Yeah, it's really slow. Where's and this that guy? Way, yeah. He's it's like, uh-oh, the engine just quit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the engine just quit, Mark. What are we going to do? And the chute is not available. I, well, I'm going to pitch for 87. Yeah, well, right below my left wing. All right. My plant. Let me see your, uh, where are you going. Down to... That one, that brown one? Yeah. Just to the west of that row of trees? Y yeah. Got it. I like it. You're on a high downwind. So from here, you got to make circles over your field, right? So as you're gliding down, yeah. so now that you're right over your field, what do we do next? The engine. Can we restart the engine? So I remember it. Three, two, one, check. Three things have to do with fuel. Mixture. Adjust mixture. Fuel pump on. Switch tanks. That'll usually get the engine running again. Fuel pump is on. Yep. Good. Two things with spark. We need spark, right? Make sure your mags are on both. Yep. Maybe even cycle them off, then back to both. Don't do that now. But, yep. And then the one thing with air is alternate air. Select alternate air. That might be the reason your engine quit. Okay, so having done all that, you've done everything you can do to restart the engine. Now it's just a matter of getting the airplane safely on the ground. You would like to be about 1,000 feet above the ground or so, 1,200 feet above the ground, a beam of your runway. That's called the key position. And it looks like you're just going to be a little bit high for that, but uh, you don't have enough altitude to go around one more time. Right. So now it's all about judging your rate of descent and when you apply the drag. You'd also be going on 121.5, mayday, mayday, mayday. Cirrus 3, Sierra Delta going down at about 30, 30 miles northwest of O'Hare, or you could say relative to 3CK. So now just fly your airplane. Like, well, whenever you think you need drag, when you got your field made, or if you need drag. Yeah, it's a long one. Put your uh, flaps out accordingly. Okay, good. I would do that too at that point. So now if you're high, if, you've, if you're too high to go straight in, just take it over here a little bit further, you know. Turn your base to final wherever. That's that's the advantage if you have a nice. See, see now we're going to have to turn. Yeah. Hang, on, hang on, I'll tell you when to go around. Push the nose down. Get act like you're landing here. Okay. Yeah. Look, keep your speed safe by lowering the nose. All right, smoothly go around. Add power. Good. That would have made that field beautifully. Your airplane would have lived to fly another so day. So there you go, another flight in the logbook. One question I got last week is, is it intimidating to fly with a CFI? For me, and I suspect the vast majority of pilots, the answer is no. Sure, we want to show that we are a good pilot, but the CFI is paid by the student to help them achieve a goal. It develops a partnership that often turns into a friendship and that is based on complete trust in each other and a joint commitment to achieving the student's goal. To be honest, I also find it quite relaxing as I know the CFI's presence adds a level of safety, which means I don't have to worry as much about making a dangerous mistake. That extra set of experienced eyes is quite comforting. And as you saw, I was less than perfect on this flight, but in the end, I am set up for success. Now it's time for me to get back in the airplane on my own and continue to practice everything Bob's taught me until I master the maneuvers and all of the goals. To be honest, I can't wait. So until next time, blue skies and tailwinds.